another major issue regarding all these different document requirements is certification of them or authentication or however you want to look at it and different countries have different requirements for that but for vietnam it appears that um, they're primarily looking for documents that have been what they call apostolized uh, now personally i never heard of that term outside of religion but i guess after some research it looks like it's a common international verification of, of documents that's covered under the the Hague Convention of, I don't know, 1966 or something like that. So I have to go to a government entity with all of my documents that I need validated, uh, probably the consulate or embassy or something along those lines, pay a fee, have them review the documents and get them apostolized or notarized with international validation, whatever the case may be. So that is yet another task on my list that has to be dealt with before I leave. Now, I've read where some people have not gone through that in advance, but waited until they're in country to deal with it. And again, your situation is going to vary person to person and country to country. But from what I've read uh, with respect to Vietnam, the process is far simpler to be dealt with prior to entering the country uh, than it is to, to go out and seek validation of those documents once you're there. So that's another pressing issue for me to deal with. And just the number of documents is, it, that alone is substantial. To give you an example, one of the other things that I'm currently working on is I've requested transcripts from the universities I've attended. Uh, now, the reason being is that, uh, from my research anyway, some employers may want to see in addition to your diploma and certifications, official validated apostolized documents, they also want to see official transcripts uh, of your education. So I've ordered transcripts. Um, I've gathered my diplomas, all my certifications, everything that's going to go into my resume or CV, depending on what country you're from. Um, Another thing that's big on my list, and I think I mentioned this before, is packing. Now, in a recent video that I watched that a teacher out there in, in the Ho Chi Minh City area had posted on YouTube, she talked about being born and raised in uh, Africa. And one of her top complaints on the pros and cons, one of her top cons of... Uh, living and teaching in Vietnam is it's hot. So from my perspective, if someone who was born and raised in Africa says that it is hot in Vietnam, I'm going to take their word for it. So I'm rethinking what type of clothing I'm going to be bringing with me based on that fact. Um, they also mentioned something else that I found really interesting uh, is that And I've, I've heard this about different countries abroad, but uh, anyway, in Vietnam in particular, the, the whiter your skin, the more uh, socially acceptable you are or the higher society you're considered. Why that is, you know, I've read and, and heard some theories behind it, but the point is um, they pride lighter skin. So when you're out there buying uh, sunscreen or body lotion, or I've heard even in some cases, uh, soap, uh, you will get products that include skin whitener, you know, basically bleaching style products. So anyway, that's really neither here nor there, so I'm digressing a bit. But uh, my point with that is, understanding that, I'm going to take some of my own Uh, SPS, S, SPF 30, you know, sunscreen, as well as a, a couple bottles of uh, uh, my favorite brand of men's body lotion. And uh, I might even take, you know, a, a package of some traditional bars of soap here from the U.S. with me, uh, just at least until I get, you know, acclimatized to the culture over there and find... Uh, the place where I can find the products that I, I really want to use. But anyway, my point with that is 
in doing your research with something as simple that you think is as simple as packing, you might find that weather conditions or product availability for things as simple as soap or lotion uh, could be a factor that you need to consider before you, you pack up and go. So in addition to everything else that I'm working on right now, uh, honing my packing list down uh, to exactly what I'm really going to need is, is a big factor as well. So, you know, the long and the short of it is, uh, now that uh, I've made some, you know, committed some funds to this venture, uh, some substantial funds to this venture, uh, it's really starting to hit home that, you know, in eight weeks or less, this is going to happen. All right, so that said, anyway, I guess the bottom line, my point for, for today's uh, video was to just take a quick minute to say, yeah, things really hit home the last couple of days that this is real, it's happening, I'm fully committed now, and uh, time is becoming a real factor. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm so glad that I gave myself you know, a couple of months to work with and get everything in order because as of today many of those things I've mentioned during this video have not yet been fully addressed I'm still waiting on transcripts I I've yet to have any of my documentation apostolized or notarized validated um, I still have those doctor's appointments pending the vision exam the uh, there is a lot of hurdles still to jump through I still have the visa process to go through so you know, depending on how long these different organizations take to get back to me with uh, documents or medications or approval letters or whatever the case may be, background checks and such, uh, I could very quickly run out of time. Uh, and that is definitely not what I want to do. Uh, like I said, I want to have everything in order and in hand before I leave. Uh, so that I can sort of set myself up for success. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, in my next video, I'll give you an update, let you know what has been done by that point and what I'm still facing. And uh, we'll take it day by day from there. But again, guys, I'm so excited about this prospect. Um, just the opportunity to see the world by itself again. And I have mentioned before, I've traveled extensively, but the opportunity to see the world again from a culturally immersed perspective is to me huge it's probably the, the largest factor in why i'm doing this the money uh compared to the cost of living in these areas is pretty reasonable uh, you know I've, I've seen some that complain that they you know they can't save anything i've seen others claim to save you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a month with no problems. So, you know, shooting at the middle of the road from what I've looked at, and and again, schools, learning centers, you know, your your job varies from location to location and position to position. But in general, it looks like if you put some real effort into it and you live within your means, uh, in the culture, then you should be able to save some money. You know, maybe only two, three hundred dollars a month, maybe five, six, seven hundred dollars a month, depending on your circumstance. But the point is, you should be able to survive, be comfortable, and still tuck away a little bit of profit. And like I said, for me, that's the money is. I'm not even going to say secondary. For me, the money is beyond secondary. It's it's not a, a huge factor. Uh, the biggest factor is the opportunity to travel the opportunity to give back to a community, uh, to educate the children uh, and young adults and preparing for their own personal dreams and goals in life, uh, to know that you got to play a part in that, uh, to share in a community of English teachers abroad. Uh, just the, the whole adventure is really the major appeal for me. So we'll see how that goes. Down the road, uh, one of my videos may not be uh, you know, I may not be as excited then as I am now, and I may have a lot of uh, a lot of cons to list with the whole ordeal. But uh, based on my research so far, I think it's going to be a fantastic adventure, a wonderful opportunity to do something good and to see the world. And uh, yeah, I'm just pumped and excited as can be. 
still a little bit stressed about getting everything done, but uh, like I said, I've given myself what I think is ample time. And again, I'd recommend if you're considering this as a career path, you know, afford yourself, I'd say at least give yourself two or three months to do your initial research. That's on uh, where, what country you might want to travel to. And uh, once you've made that decision, which school you might attend for certification and which certification program you might pursue. So, yeah, if you give yourself, I think, two or three months to do that initial basic research, uh, I, I think you should be fine. And then um, that is in addition to, I believe, my opinion, you ought to give yourself another two to three months for preparations. And the preparations being the things that I've spoken of, you know, getting your your budgeting in order, getting your documents in order, getting your health concerns in order, your packing needs in order, um, just getting all of your ducks in a row. I think probably two to three month uh, window is a good time frame to get all that addressed. So I guess what I'm saying really is if, if this sounds like something that you might want to do, uh, either for a short-term period uh, or for a permanent career change, um, I'd say make your decision roughly six months out from uh, from when you'd like to actually start uh, in country uh, with the training program. So if you do that, you should be safe and sound. You shouldn't be, you know, overly rushed or stressed, and. Uh, you should set yourself up for success. You should arrive with everything in order and not have to jump through hoops. Uh, I'm sure that I will meet people based on the reviews I've seen out there. I'm certain that I will meet people in class that um, have not made all the preparations in advance. And, you know, that may or may not affect their ability to uh, assimilate into the culture. It may or may not affect their ability to find work quickly. Um, but I know for me, uh, I consider it an essential, you know, be prepared. That's job one in my mind. So anyhow, with that said, again, it's so exciting to think about this new prospect. And I'm so happy to be able to share with you uh, each step of the way as I go along. And I hope you find something of interest out of it. And I hope, again, that... Um, at some point, I'll mention something that maybe you didn't think of or that maybe helps you in your own endeavors.